Hello fellow cinephiles, Film Guru here. Today I'm reviewing a Steven Spielberg classic from 1977, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. This was his third feature film and stars Richard Dreyfuss, Francis Truffaut, Melinda Dillon, Bomb Balaban and Terry Carr. Now, the film opens and begins a group of men in the desert and we find out that they're scientists. We're introduced to Bob Balaban's character and Francis Truffaut's character. And they ultimately go into this particular area and we see three planes from the 40s. And we slowly learn that these planes are actually from World War II and had disappeared and had just really reappeared recently. And this sort of begins the strange mythology behind what's really happening. Then we're introduced to Melinda Dillon's character and her young son, who ultimately witness strange occurrences happening lights flashing, her son's toys come to life. And it's all these really strange and unique things that start to happen. And, it's, and this is the beginning of the story. And then we're introduced to Richard Dreyfuss and his family and his wife, Terry Gar. He's a, an everyman. He's the character where we see the sort of see the world through. Strange occurrences start to happen. Every, all the town blacks out and he's ultimately sent in to try and fix it or find where the issue is because he works for, for the power company. But along the way he gets lost. And this is a really interesting moment when we, he sort of has an interaction with this particular UFO and it's really well done. It starts with him stopping in the middle of the road. We see these lights come up behind him and then he waves them around and we think maybe this is going to be the alien ship and then it turns out to be people. And then they do the same thing later except the lights lift up and a flash of light comes over his truck and all things start to happen. These mailboxes next to him start to shake things within the car start to pop up and, and fall out. And this is accomplished by the car turning upside down in, in behind the scenes. And it's really well um, effectively done. This is the first interaction he has with UFOs and the first interaction we have. And it's all me racing against time and chasing these things down. And he passes police cars and other people chasing it to see what's actually going on. And the government all makes it out to be some sort of hoax. Dreyfus's character, Roy, becomes obsessed with finding out the truth of what's going on. He has this urgency in, in him, and, and he sort of has this flash, this imagery in his head of this great, this great mountainish sort of structure that he becomes obsessed with, and he starts to craft it in a variety of different ways. And in one particular scene, that's the, the most, one of the most simple but powerful scenes, is he's sitting around the table with his family, He's still trying to work out what's going on. He's got this image of this, this sort of rock structure. And with, and with the aid of mashed potatoes, he starts to form this thing on his plate. Why his wife and his three kids just, just stare at him and wonder what the hell's going on. And you get this sense that they think he's losing his mind. And then he sort of gets frustrated and angry with things, but he also becomes upset and sort of starts to cry. And it's this moment where he sees his family look at him this way and it upsets him. And they think he, he might be crazy. But he starts to question his own sanity as well in this scene. It's a very powerful and unique scene. The next scene after that is obviously he finds a way to craft his thing by pulling out you know, plants out of the ground and stealing neighbours' sort of chicken wine or a variety of things to build this thing. And he thinks he's lost his mind when he's sort of ultimately shown that this structure is Devil's Tower and where these strange things happen, he learns this from the TV. Melinda Dillon's character, Gillian, experiences a, quite an extraordinary alien encounter, I guess you could say, with the UFO, where it's her and the sun again, these lights come and light up the sky, things shake, things come to life. And she tries to lock all the doors and tries to sort of keep her and the sun safe, but ultimately he gets taken and she doesn't know what happened to him. And it's really about her journey of coming to terms with what's going on, trying to get to the truth and ultimately find her son that's disappeared. And it's about how these two people c come together to find out the truth, f for her to find out what happened to her son and for, for Roy to, to really make sense of what's going on in his head and this, this urgency to work out what's going on. It looks at how they go towards the mountain, how they uh, you know, escape the sort of military and come upon this particular area where all these sciences have gathered and are waiting for these you know, UFOs to appear to, so they can interact with them, so they can sort of converse with them in some form. And this comes through as this, as this tune, this piece of music that is, is so simple but effective in the scenes and it sort of allows them to communicate with these UFOs without actually having to use English or words. And I really like that. And it's revealed that these you know, UFOs are traveling around and they sort of, in one point in the film, 
it lands, it opens up, and all these people through history come out, all these people who disappeared, pilots and navy men and women and children and people from different times on Earth. And it's really effectively done. We've also introduced to a couple of aliens as well. And I think they are a little dated, but they work really well. And it just is about this moment where they're interacting with you, trying to communicate. And they have this little people that they want to try and get on the ship to have this experience. But the aliens choose Richard Dreyfuss' character, Roy. This moment where he goes on this journey with them, that's sort of how the film ends. So it's a very simple film. What I like about the ending is it asks you as an audience member, would you get on the ship? Would you get on this extraterrestrial UFO ship with these aliens and go on a journey, or would you not? For me, I would. I'd jump on there just to see what happened and where to go. I, I, and where it would go, I really like that concept. This is one of my favorite Spielberg films. It really felt like he cared here. It really felt like he was hungry and trying to build his career and, and make the films he wanted to make. And this is very Spielberg in many ways. It has a lot of things he would use later in his particular films. The Individual on a Quest, Sympathetic Mother, Lost Boy, and Untrustworthy Authorities. And a transforming experience. This is sort of the beginning of where he would do that. Where he would take this character and every man, a man we can get behind and go on a journey with and relate to. A man who is a normal guy who has a family but has had this extraordinary experience and can't switch off what it's open up in his mind and he has to seek the truth he has to follow it through no matter the cost or the consequences to see what happens and why he's been given this information in this particular image in his head even if you take away the special effects which are sort of dated but work fairly well for the story it's, it's telling what remains is a human story of an ordinary man in extraordinary circumstances and it has a lot of stuff that I think he would use later in E.T. The small town, the family element. Um, E.T., yes, is more focused on the kids than the adults, but it has the same sort of elements. Like we have the authority figures, the guy with the keys, you know, Peter Coyote plays, and just the government's involvement and how they're trying to hide this, this alien and how it sort of helps them. And in a way, the, the appearance in Close Encounters of the UFOs helps the town folk to realise there's more out there than what there seems and to give them sort of an extraordinary experience that they'll never forget that sort of shaped and transformed them. I watched the theatrical version and I just feel this the theatrical version doesn't do justice to this film. There's two other versions of it, the special edition of the director's cut. If you haven't seen the film, you want to see it or see a, extent, a better version of it, watch the, either the special edition or the director's cut because I feel that he put a lot more in it. The theatrical version is very simple and basic, but I just feel there's a lot more he added in that was much more effective to telling the story. I think all the performances were solid. Richard Dreyfuss is an actor I really like. He, he's solid. He worked really well with Spielberg in the films he was in with this and Jaws. And he had a great working relationship. And he played such a realistic man and was able to add a bit of humour into what his performance. And I just liked the, the way he portrayed Roy and how he sort of reacted to the experiences he was having. I think Melinda Dillon's really solid as well as Gillian and her relationship with her son, that she's a single mother, she's living in this house, that she's an artist. They show you all this sort of stuff about who she is. And I thought she's really solid in it. Her reaction to when her son gets taken is really interesting. And when her, she finally gets her son back in the end, it's just the, and the interaction between her and Dreyfus is really well. Terry Garr plays, plays Dreyfus's wife. And she's really great as well, and the chemistry between them is realistic, and you feel that there's this marriage and this relation. When he starts to act erratically, and, fear, and she starts to fear he's lost his mind, it sort of creates a barrier between them, forces them apart, and he can't stop until he gets to the truth. But what I found really interesting about his character is he had this family, he ends up pushing them away, he goes on this journey to find out the truth of what's going on, what these UFOs really are and what they want and why they put an image in his head to go to this particular devil tower, devil's tower. He gets there, he experiences it all, he sees the UFOs, he sees the aliens, he has this whole thing happen. And then he decides to get on the ship without a second thought of his wife and his children. And I thought that was an interesting element. It's like nothing was going to stop him getting on the ship. And I, I felt that in the theatrical version we see that maybe in the other versions of the film we might actually see why he does it and, and the fact he may not forget about his family like he seemed to in this particular moment. Like I said earlier, the visual effects are a little dated but they work really well. 
the practicality of, of it is what I really like, is you've got bright lights, we've got um, when everything starts popping out of his car, you know, the, the behind the scenes of cars are turned over. The use of lights, the sounds, the, everything that happens in these particular scenes is very effective and very practical. Even the designs of the creatures and the aliens that we see are very practical and a bit dated, but they work for the story. And visual effects were quite extraordinary for that time, really, because this film came out at the same time as Star Wars, and Star Wars sort of ILM created this visual effects that hadn't really been seen or used before, and, and Spielberg, you know, obviously took a bit from that with the creation of the UFOs. And, but he's also using old techniques like matte paintings and, and a variety of things to make it look as real as possible. And I really love that. I love it set in a small town. I love there's a journey that these characters have to go on physically and mentally. You know, they become obsessed. Francis Truffaut is fantastic in it, playing a scientist. I thought he was really great in the movie. I'm surprised he didn't do more acting. There's something really interesting about him, the way he portrays his character, the way he interacts with other characters, and the way he reacts to things that are going on in front of him is just fantastic. And the chemistry between him and Bob Balaban is really fantastic as well. And Bob Balaban gives a great solid performance as this character as well. I just think it's one of Spielberg's best. I like the idea it looks at you know UFOs and that sort of experience and it has a very effective scenes in it and shots and it's very well done. The, the third act of the film, the climax of the film where the, the uh, UFOs land and they interact with them, that's some of the best shot sequences and really great scene overall. And it says so much about who these visitors from outer space are. And I know, I just think that's really well done. And like I mentioned, Dreyfus at the, the kitchen table, but I like the first experience he has. And I really like the sequence where the young boy is taken from Melinda Dillon's character, Gillian. It's just that whole sequence is very well done. I really like the music in it. There's so much to like about this. And if you like sort of UFO films or alien films or a good sci-fi, this is definitely worth your time. It's so brilliantly done. Back when Spielberg seemed to want to make really good film. But it's good to go back to this. It's good to go back to a film like this, something that really catapulted his career. He wouldn't be able to make this film if he didn't make Jaws and didn't have success with that and create the blockbuster. But this was a more intimate film. It was more about normal people and families and this extraordinary thing that happens to, to them and, and how they react to that. I just think it's fantastically done. Where really outdid himself for this film. It seemed to be a subject matter he was passionate about and he had a lot to say about it. And I really liked the film that he, he gave us. Final thoughts. At the heart, it's about family. It's about how extraordinary things can happen. It's about how maybe we aren't alone in the universe. It was pushing science fiction in an interesting way. It showed aliens as nice sort of creatures rather than, you know, crazy things like the thing or anything like that. It sort of made the aliens kind of nice and kind of interesting and intriguing and have that ability to draw us in. He really felt like he was a kid again, that he was out in his backyard making this film, but he just had the more money and his ability to craft an interesting story. I really enjoyed my experience with this film. It's a classic for a reason. I'm a real big fan of it, and it's good to see early Spielberg films again and see the talent the man does have that he gets a little lost in the films he wants to make these days. Anyway, that's all from me today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please hit subscribe down the bottom. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Otherwise, until next time, enjoy the movies.